Well, I am glad you are all here. So we will start in a minute. Get ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you today for the privilege to be in your presence. We thank you and lift up your name because the Bible tells us you are the Lord, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the God of Gods. You are the great, the mighty, and the awesome God who does not take bribes, who does not show partiality in your judgments. We thank you that we belong to you. We thank you that you are the God who fashioned and formed us in your very image. Lord, we commit our study to you today as we come into your presence. We pray that your Holy Spirit will minister to us what he intends to do in our lives, individually and collectively. We praise you for your son, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed his life as we will celebrate today, his death, his burial, his resurrection, all for us because you love us so much. As the Bible tells us, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We pray that, Lord, today we might again be reminded of your love and your commitment to us. I pray submitting myself to the authority of your Holy Spirit to minister your word through me. And Lord, I pray for each heart to be opened to receive what you want them to receive as you work in our lives to accomplish your greater purposes for each one of us. These things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, World War I. Got a woman here. World War I which was fought from 1914 to 1918, has been ranked by many as one of the deadliest conflicts in human history. Millions lost their lives in the first global modern war. On November 11, 1918, maybe somebody is born on that day, on November 11, 1918, a ceasefire was observed on the 11th day of the 11th month. And during that historic moment, millions around the world observed moments of silence while they reflected upon the terrible cost that is the life of, that is the loss of life and suffering. It was hoped that the Great War as it was called, would truly be the war that will end all wars. Today we know that that is not the case. The world experienced a second world war from 1939 to 1945. Millions more were lost and many were left in great misery and suffering. Well, over 2,500 years before these two great wars, the people of Babylon also experienced their great war when God predicted their doom and downfall in unmistakable language. Though God had used Babylon as his rod of anger in executing his righteous judgment, on rebellious Judah and Jerusalem, the time will come for Babylon to be judged for her many sins, which include her godlessness and greed. Sins which are being manifested today in greater and greater degree in the United States. And oh, what, a, what suffering, distress, and destruction came upon great Babylon for their godlessness and their greed. 
So this brings me to the main idea of the message God has given me from his word, his holy word to deliver to you today. Please, I want you to listen carefully to it, not just with your head, but more importantly with your heart, where the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth and transformation is eager to plant the, the seed of God's enduring and eternal truth in order to transform believers more into the glorious image of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the savior and sanctifier of the church, and to turn unbelievers to, from the sin of unbelief to personal saving faith in Jesus Christ, the seeker of lost sinners and the shepherd of the sheep. So here then is the message in a nutshell. Would you please listen carefully to it with an open heart. There is only misery for the person or nation that thinks he or it can do without God. I repeat, there is only misery, yes indeed, untold suffering for the individual or nation that thinks he or it can do without God. Folks, friends, fellow believers in the family of God, this is the unmistakable message the Holy Spirit is about to teach us as we have now come to the concluding part of Habakkuk chapter 2, the book we have been studying. It is a message that is so relevant for our, for our times in which individuals as well as nations are choosing to do away with God in their private and public lives. If the people of Babylon were here today, they would be shouting into our ears to all of us with all earnestness, do not go that way, the way of living without God, because it leads only to your misery and destruction. Well, please, if you have your Bibles, Turn them to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 6 to 20. For the sake of context, I will recite from the very beginning of Habakkuk chapter 2. In other words, I'll be trying to recite all of Habakkuk chapter 2. I'll be reciting from the updated New American Standard Bible. So would you please listen carefully as I recite the word of God. The Bible says, I will, I will stand on my God post and I will stand on my God post and station myself on the rampart. And I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me. And, I, and how I may reply when I am reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, Record a vision and inscribe it on tablets that the one who reads it may run. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens toward the goal and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it. For it will certainly come, and for it will certainly come, and it will not delay. But as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him. But the righteous will live by his faith. Furthermore, wine betrays the hearty man so that he does not stay at home. He is like, he enlarges his appetite like Shiro. And he is, and he is like death, never satisfied. He also gathers to himself all nations. He collects to himself all peoples. Now to verse 6. To 20. The Bible says, Will not all of this take up a taunt song against him? 
even mockery and insinuations against him, and say, Woe to him who increases what is not his. For how long? And makes himself rich with loans. Will not your creditors rise up suddenly and those who collect from you awake? Indeed, you become plunder for them. Because you have looted many nations, all the remainder of the peoples will loot you. Because of human bloodshed and violence done to the land, to the town, and all its inhabitants. Woe to him who gets evil gain for his house, to, build, to put his nest on high, to be delivered from the hand of calamity. You have devised a shameful thing for your house by cutting off many peoples. So you are sinning against yourself. Surely the stone will cry out from the wall and the rafter will answer it from the framework. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and founds a town with violence. Is it not indeed from the Lord of hosts that peoples toil for fire and nations grow weary for nothing? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. Woe to him, to him woe to you who makes who, who makes your neighbor, who make your neighbors drink. Woe to you who make your neighbors drink, who makes in your venom even to make them drunk so as to look on their nakedness. You will be filled with shame, you will be filled with disgrace rather than honor. Now you yourself drink and expose your own nakedness. For the cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you and utter disgrace will come upon your glory. For the violence done to Lebanon will overwhelm you and the devastation of his beasts by which you terrify them because of human bloodshed and violence done to the land, to the town, and all its inhabitants. What profit is an idol when its maker has carved it? Or an image, a teacher of falsehood? Its maker trusts in his own handiworks when he fashions speechless idols. Woe to him who said to a piece of wood, Awake! To a mute stone, Arise! And that is your teacher? Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all inside it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. This is the word of God to the people of God. And may the Lord add his blessing to the recital of his holy word.